Yeah, uh, and uh, this meetup will be about uh, Power BI adoption roadmap. So I will uh, will uh, use slides and also will use uh, uh, web content. And uh, let me also open the chat where I will uh, I will share this web content already that you could could use use open it and uh, probably use it so uh, the main idea why why we need or we we are talking about some adoption power bi adoption uh, roadmap or framework is because uh, as you see in this picture that usually when we need to do some initial deployments and or we need to activate some technology in this case we are talking about Power BI, of course, but uh, Microsoft means here uh, Power BI, uh, self-service BI. So uh, we are thinking uh, about uh, when, or, or during this presentation, when when I saying uh, B, uh, Power BI, uh, also think about uh, uh, have in mind uh, self-service BI because it's not uh, implementation of any technology, but mostly. Uh, self-service self BI, and when we uh, could have this uh, self-service uh, capability in our organization. So, and here we can see that the deploy, deployment and activation, it means that we are installing the Power BI first time, building a couple of reports, connecting some databases, publishing reports, and even sharing them. So it looks nice, yeah, but then uh, things uh, be, uh, become more complicated because if, if we really want to adapt the technology, uh, it means implement all the data protection, uh, data master data management practices, data culture, and, and become pro-efficient with, uh, with using this technology, then uh, usually we, we, we are in trouble. So it's not going, it's not uh, happening um, automatically. And that is really a problem which uh, uh, Power BI um, adoption framework or adoption roadmap tries to, to solve. And here you could see that all the elements of adoption roadmap. So it's, uh, it's a an, 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 uh, set of these action items and considerations that you could should, should take in an in, in account on different um, levels of, of development of your uh, Power BI implementation. And you see, see that it starts with data culture and executive uh, sponsorship, and then it's uh, content ownership, content delivery, including uh, data management. It's center of excellence. Uh, it's center of excellence that helps us drive it and governance and uh, many other things. So if I we switch, over to web and the link I shared in the chat. So you if you look, uh, if you look at the, the description, uh, so you could read about each of these elements in details. And in this pre presentation, I'm more, uh, of course, I could, can't include everything. So in one hour, um, in details, it's more, we will look at some most important uh, things here, uh, but uh, if you want, you could I even encourage you to read uh, the topics that seems uh, more important for you. Like if data culture is important for you, uh, read the data culture, very interesting uh, insights there. If governance is more uh, relevant or center of excellence and, and things like that. Um, and I will give you an overview and uh, uh, maybe uh, insight into what should be or could be uh, most interesting for you uh, from this content. So it's published it available. And yeah, uh, if you have any question or comment, please don't wait to uh, end, but uh, just uh, uh, immediately when you have question, unmute yourself and ask or write in the chat. So that is how this uh, framework is structured, this roadmap, and um, we will look at these these elements. But uh, from the the content with, where, which is available, we see here um, 
the list bullet bullets of uh, of the content which is available we will look at some of these like we will look at adoption adoption maturity levels what it means uh, how we could say that on what level of maturity we are uh, of course the data culture which is very important um, why we need this exec executive uh, sponsorship um, what to do with the center of excellence and um, and and some things probably are are very clear uh, and self-explanatory like user support and governance but basically if i look at these topics we are talking about how the power bi or bi self-service bi is organized in our organization so it means that uh, is it as a system driven as a system that we are um, uh, understanding the common landscape and common uh, common uh, way how we uh, not just running it but how we could uh, create new things how the new things are driven because from the content uh, this uh, framework perspective we of course we look more on enablement on future enablement it means that uh, future enablement it means that how we could actually uh, drive how our organization could drive um, data culture and how uh, our organization could uh, learn about uh, about things uh, about uh, uh, how the uh, users are helping each other especially when we talk about self-service of bi when we understand that users are actually business users are helping other business users uh, to do some more efficient things and understand. And of course, it's not about that. Uh, do you have a center of excellence uh, or do you have some uh, uh, power user uh, or uh, power user community or different side of community or do you have a knowledge base uh, and things like that, but how it's organized and what is the quality of these things? And that is what we need to discuss. If we look at the maturity levels, Microsoft provides here the idea of five maturity levels, like 100, 200, starting 100 and finishing 500. So if you will, you could read uh, about, uh, about them in more details, what means initial, what means reputable, repeatable or planned sometimes, what means defined, capable, uh, capable and efficient. But uh, the main idea that uh, you could rate your organization, put your organization in some of these levels, and that also gives you understanding where you could en uh, enhance and where you could have this enhancement. The most important here is that, uh, uh, of course, it's very easy to qualify for initial, but uh, when you need to plan and repeat like this level 200 or level 300, so where the things are defined and you could easily understand uh, what, where, and when uh, could and should happen, then um, you could start growing this uh, self-service BI capability. And of course, level 500, when we say, when, when we define what means efficiency, so uh, how we could be efficient. And we, uh, if we uh, switch over to the maturity levels here in, in um, you could look at them uh, in this link I shared this year. So you could see that what's inside the uh, 100 uh, and others. But if you look, go, go try to the level 500, we of course understand that this is the way how we optimize and how we drive more insights. And it means not, not technical. It means that we are not building reports faster or we could, uh, uh, build, build more reports, but it means that the whole organization is a build in a way that we could capture, transfer, and and create uh, uh, value, uh, which uh, mainly business value, by using self-service BI. It means that the reports are uh, the analytics is more accessible, and uh, and we build it in the right way and have the, all the necessary necessary skill set to do that. 
And one of the points uh, I think are super important and actually core of the uh, this uh, framework is a data culture because, uh, uh, as you know, as Peter Drecker said, that uh, um, culture culture eats strategy on breakfast. Uh, so it's very important how what what's what what's our cult, data culture is. If you know if the business if business don't believe in data driven decisions, you could build uh, as much as you like. Uh, uh, as as much as you want uh, reports and analytics yeah and and no one will look at uh, and use this analytics so it's very important that uh, we have a common data literacy and a common data um, culture uh, that and 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 what what's stated here what in in this uh, uh, roadmap uh, the adoption roadmap that it should come from the executive level so in the, in the from the executive level, there should be a statement about how we align organizational objectives with the, all the analytics we are doing, how it's actually implemented or embedded in strategy building when we build strategy, and of course that how we use actually analytics to enable uh, uh, enable uh, uh, results and uh, and then align them with company objectives. So. It's, it's really important. That is why uh, executive. It should come from the executive level because it should be implemented in the common management uh, uh, structure and uh, and all this all the data data driven approach and uh, how we use data. And therefore, there's a couple of things I just added from myself, uh, and one is this uh, approach that you could find in this. Uh, uh, Douglas Hubbard book, How to Measure Anything. And it's a uh, really cornerstone for me of understanding data and building data culture. And uh, it's how we actually understand how we think about data. So it's we, it, we have more and more data, a lot of data. So uh, we need to decide uh, uh, not looking at the data like uh, gigabytes, terabytes, and so on. We need to go inside the data and, and, and understand the essence of, and quality of the data. So if we're using some data, so we need to understand that it is a customer data for what period it is, where it comes from, how it's measured, what it actually shows, what are the limitations of this uh, data? Can we use this data for um, real-time results or uh, it's just uh, some, uh, monthly results, weekly results, etc. So it's very important uh, of data understanding. And the one of, uh, if you talk about data literacy, I can't uh, uh, can not mention uh, Alberto Cairo, and he's providing also some uh, insights and and uh, ideas, principles on the data literacy and uh, how how to measure things and. And uh, he defines that data literacy actually is around four things. It's how we read data, how we work the, with, with data, how we analyze, and how we argue with data. Uh, and it's all, also, I think, goes very hand in hand with uh, this idea that um, data culture in an organization, it's actually, if you want to implement successful data culture in your organization, you need to follow these four principles. So re, you need to have these skills, like you uh, should be able to read data, work with, analyze, and argue with data. So if you miss some of the, some of these, then uh, yeah, you understand that it's very very hard to uh, build proper data culture. If you are not reading, we just analyzing it. Um, yeah, we will probably will not be able arguing this this data. Uh, and um, if uh, if we look at uh, what what data literate person can do, yeah, we we also see this. Uh, I put this. These are principles from Alberto Caira. In this case, the first one is really most important: that cultivate cultivate value of thought and reflection. So so we are discussing and understanding this data. 
And if you want some some useful reading about it, I, I, I would recommend you this book. This is Data Literacy Fundamentals. There is another book by Ben Jones already, but in this book, you he's discussing uh, the main questions you need to answer when you when you think about uh, think about data. And uh, also looking uh, before we go into details with adoption framework, you need to understand that uh, business intelligence is not uh, uh, not a product. Uh, business intelligence is not a technology. Yeah, sometimes we say BI, BI, and even in in Power BI, yeah, as a, is a product name. Power BI is a product name, but uh, and and sometimes we, we think that BI is product, but actually it's not. The business intelligence, business intelligence mean intelligence means that we are can look and analyze goals, and we defining the goals, and then we go uh, and uh, to, to fulfill these goals, to achieve these goals, we actually create or adjust our organizational structure and uh, to fulfill these goals with organization we have, the people we have, we, are, we build processes, so we design processes and actually the, the, you know that the goals and the organizational structure, the processes are changing every year and they are changing quite a lot. And then we, to, to manage them, to understand what's happening, we are creating reports and KPI, and actually intersection of all this stuff is a business intelligence. The business intelligence definition is that BI, the way how we explain how company works with, with the numbers, with, a, with, a, uh, with data. So uh, this is a business intelligence. It's, it, it interpretation of or explanation of uh, how a company works using data. And it's very important because data culture then means not building uh, good reports, but uh, having a good understanding of all this together. And that is why the business and uh, IT should work together. Another thing, uh, like if we go closer to, 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 to BI and business, Business intelligence and uh, maybe even reports. There, there, there are four levels of how how really the good reports are built, and uh, that how it it it's uh, um, it's leveled by the actually how it explain how how the business process is explained it by report, and in most cases, I would say in ninety nine percent of cases. Uh, there, there is a business process like sales or marketing, some of the business process or your HR, onboarding or hiring. And there is a uh, built report using all possible data we could find. We're finding a lot of data. We're building the report, but we are not saying which part exactly where explained. It. So it's, it's find yourself a report. So we are giving you a report. We are creating. There's all many interesting things. Uh, it, maybe when we are building report, it explains this and that, but we are not uh, uh, explaining uh, which business process part is uh, is where where it's located, where where best way to see to use. Next level is when we, we could say that if you are in this step of the a business process, that look at the, at, at this, and you could find their uh, needed measures. Uh, and 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 it goes more and more. So actually, the business uh, business process should be explained by the report. So if we look at the report, actually, can see that how the business process works, or it, uh, the business process and the re analytics should be very linked. And it could be done only if uh, if every time we are changing business process, we we think how the data. Would be used in each process step. So when we design the business process, when we change it, we also think how they relate relevant or related to analytics could be used here and help us. And that is the way how we transfer the knowledge from our heads into the uh, explicit or structured knowledge, building them into inside the report. 
and um, center of excellence and um, this is a, a center of excellence actually is a the part of your organization when the brightest people about the topic are uh, put put it together like uh, power users uh, power users of power bi in this case and analytics and they are with different roles there could be uh, uh, developers could be uh, analysts could be report builders could be uh, tech engineers and business users who are actually keeping and collecting all the knowledge needed uh, for organization uh, accumulating in this excellence center it means it's a it's a source of excellence yeah it's a source of knowledge so and 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 it uh, it's a source of best practice and how to do it uh, in the best way in your organization it accumulates all the knowledge providing trainings and etc and uh, it's not necessary that you have a, like large center of excellence like i don't know two three five people sometimes it's a part a part time job that uh, uh, you could um, have a part, part partly like 20%, 30, 50% allocation of resources here, just to have them together, that they could discuss, work together, elaborate on, on the topics. And of course, they are keep, they keep uh, uh, the overall data culture and uh, organizing internal events, uh, probably organizing some uh, uh, content uh, gathering and publishing that you have some internal uh, blog uh, video site materials examples uh, and stuff like that so really center of excellence could be driver or, or and keeper gatekeeper of this uh, data culture and this uh, this picture uh, i borrowed it from uh, from another um, Another Microsoft practice, which is A/B testing, but I think it's it's uh, explains uh, explains very well what you need to do with uh, analytics in your organization. And um, Microsoft calls it uh, a flywheel, right? Flywheel, and uh, you need actually uh, accumulate energy you put in into uh, uh, accumulate uh, energy you put in into an effort uh, effort you put in uh, you put in uh, in in your in your uh, uh, in your power bi or analytics analytics development so it it should run in in some some time um, sometime uh, automatically and um, and uh, and with, with, without adding so great effort so how it works i will explain shortly but uh, in this example you could see that it is a b testing example um, uh, i will uh, explain it um, Uh, so, and we, we we could see that number one. So we start with this number one, and uh, in Power BI case, we are deciding about uh, implementing some reports. And imagine, remember this day, if you have already implementation of Power BI, remember this day, you decided, okay, let's uh, add our li licenses to to our um, tenant and start building uh, first reports. So it's exciting interactive analytics uh, super cool we need to add additional column no problem just click drag and drop it's here so uh, it's super super thing so you, you start to build these reports and super important actually this flywheel will not run if on step two you will not capture and will be able to explain the value you gain so you you must find a way how you could explain the value uh, you got because you built this report or you start started to use this analytic part of analytics. So you, there should be story which you could explain to your other colleagues. You said, oh, you see, we implemented this report and now we could uh, 
uh, faster pro pro uh, pro proceed with this or we could uh, save some money or we could find new customers or or uh, so so many things so the, you should explain the benefits only then if the benefits are will will be visible uh, there will be increase and others will come and say oh we also want to build a port and then the flywheeling start spinning and uh, there's a more request for 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 uh, uh, analytics, and then on step four you start to invest as an organization. You say, okay, we need some people, we need trainers, we need materials, we need probably video lectures, uh, or probably we need uh, more licenses and stuff like that. So you are ready to invest because there is an increasing demand and there is a good example. And on and on uh, on stage five, you are starting to optimize it. You are ready to optimize. You say, okay, let's um, use this storage or let's use this uh, uh, technology or people uh, you know, to make it more efficient. And it goes over again. So you implement the capture value. So in Power BI, in practice, I would say the most difficult is step number two. So how to show value. It's how to show this business value of, of the analytics. And in most cases, it's very difficult. So we are created another report. Why, why we need it, what it gives to us, it's uh, hard to explain. Uh, but if you can explain that this flywheel will start spinning and uh, you will build uh, definitely this data culture. And, and let's look how the how the actually if we go to other parts of this adoption framework, uh, how how it uh, looks like. So imagine that there is a Joe Blocks who this is a business uh, business analyst who, who who needs the help and implement uh, this uh, uh, this this um, technology and uh, uh, capability actually of analytics. And there is opportunity, of course, implement self-service and data-driven culture. And actually the challenge, challenge is that uh, implementing this self-service BI, it's not easy. And uh, uh, there's um, many, many, many obstacles uh, in doing, doing that. And of course, uh, the proposal is to implement a data culture, which helps us um, to, uh, put all these things together and uh, uh, and get the value. And here we can stay, see these stages of adaption. So we start with awareness, of course, understanding things. Now, now, then, then we build understanding. We put effort into enablement and adapting, adapting things. Uh, and uh, adoption usually takes uh, the largest time of all. Of all. And uh, a in this framework, you will find all these four pillars. So there is a four pillars. Uh, first is pre-proof pre value, and that is what I showed you on the flywheel. This uh, step number two, that you could build this uh, awareness, and then this, uh, that you could show show value. Then governance, and mostly it relates to data quality and the master data management, and of course how we giving license people licenses to people some some practical practice practicalities that we need to include rollout uh, uh, how we assign licenses and support what kind of materials uh, um, help uh, training and, and things like that we have in the, inside the organization and here we have a breakdown of these pillars you could see what's exactly is in 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 this uh, inside these pillars and um, as I said, in, the, in this value, improved value pillar, so the, if we want to get a fund, the funding, we need to calculate a business case. If we want to have a business case, we need to actually capture and understand, understand what is the value of this uh, analytical report. And, and this is, I find, personally, I find it very, very um, complicated and very hard to do. So how we could explain the really value of implementing this additional report or dashboard. 
and you could read what we have, of course, on government side, we have administration and uh, and for support, it's different uh, and different uh, things that we could uh, we could use here. Uh, and uh, how it's built, how Microsoft built it. Uh, Microsoft used different channels to, to build it, like white papers, uh, um, inside the BIM, inside the Microsoft, uh, community information and, and best practice also from customer experiences. And let's let's look at this uh, a little bit cartoons. So there's a Joe. Joe wants to uh, he loves data and uh, he wants to empower organization, uh, but he needs to help help actually how to do it right. Uh, understand what data could could be usable, uh, where where it's uh, where it where to use it, how to deploy. So all this environment or we say platform things governance thinks uh, that everything is in place, uh, describe it well, that Joe actually could uh, easily uh, proceed with that. And here is a Paul, Paul, and he's uh, like Power BI geek, and uh, he will go, he probably is a part of Center of Excellence, uh, champion, uh, or sometimes it's uh, Microsoft itself, uh, with professional services partner or customer. So he could help uh, Joe actually to all, all, uh, um, pass all the object, uh, or pass all the um, complex stuff and uh, do the self, self service adoption. And uh, here we say that there is a data driven crowd culture, but first, uh, first obstacle is a capability uh, that we could build build this capability. And if we look at the capability, uh, uh, we need to discuss. Uh, we do this capability assessment. We need to dis discuss this uh, business business value um, uh, involvement of of uh, senior senior um, leadership and of course funding. And uh, here are a couple of activities that could be done. Um, the Microsoft itself gives indication of how much it will take and what are, are the uh, main uh, points here. So you usually start with a half a day business workshop explaining IT and business stakeholders what uh, the benefits of analytics and how it works. So explaining the Power BI analytics itself. And then building POCs, so mainly building reports and uh, uh, and dashboards that you could show how it works. To, to actually to capture this value in very short time and, and demonstrate this value, and then you are presenting to it. There is a whole whole day workshop, and you could present it, explain, showing the pluses, minuses, and different options. And as you know, uh, showing and demonstrating Power BI, you could uh, um, change visualizations easily and show different functions like uh, <clears throat> some advanced things, uh, maybe uh, advanced, advanced analytics capabilities, AI capabilities, and, and so on. And it could be easily demonstrated. And then again, finish with a, with a presentation to senior stakeholders um, from business and IT. And that is, could be as a starting point when you're just starting with a Power BI. And at the same time, it could be in a smaller case, maybe each time you are uh, probably again trying to prove this value. So it's not, uh, you don't need to do it when you build each report, but when you think about uh, re rollout or rollout, initial rollout, or uh, if you do it in a couple of years, so you are imagine that you are running Power BI a couple of years, and now you're saying, "Oh, we are not uh, going in the right direction. There is we something is working, but something is not st still is not done uh, as as, we, as properly as as needed." So you could do this process then after two years of working or five years working. No, no, five years. It's it's maximum at the moment that you are working with Power BI, yeah? but after two years. One year you could again do this exercise 
uh, for example, it, it's best to involve and uh, involve senior leadership and senior sponsorship, even if you are, or maybe management is top management is, is changed for your company. So repeating this activity, it's uh, very, very useful. And if you prove it value, okay, you are ready to go. No, no obstacles anymore here. And next one is the management obstacles. So if you look at governance here, uh, what are the uh, standards we are using, like for security, roles, um, access rights, roles and responsibilities, who is administrating, and data governance. The, the, the hardest, the largest point here is, of course, data governance, master data management. Do we have a data catalog? Uh, how we how we describe the data and actually if it's if it's profit uh, how we know how it's calculated and what are the data sources for this measure and to go with this uh, we there are a set of activities we are doing half day workshop again follow ups then we are going through these checklists and and uh, and uh, preparing the documents and saying that and standards and stuff. And again, we have a strategy presentation showing that what's done and uh, wrap up uh, with a strategy refinement. Uh, and uh, this time, these days could be different uh, on the, uh, depends on scope we are covering. But uh, this, after this uh, governance uh, and strategy refinement, we have again, a set of, uh, set of uh, principles and and things or action items that we need to do for, for governance. And again, with the governance, this management is uh, cracked and we could uh, proceed. And uh, next is deployment. And, uh, we need to uh, roll out it. So we need to assign licenses, for example. And there is um, uh, nice um, examples you could find on, for example, the Microsoft documentation, YouTube, uh, how to, for example, licenses could be automatically assigned. And we understand that there are different type of licenses, like uh, currently uh, there, all the organizations will have an option to assign um, pro license or uh, premium per user license. So it's, a, 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 it's possible to add, or maybe Office 365, some specific license, or power automate license or power apps license that you need together to access resources. Maybe it's a SQL server license and, and stuff like that. And uh, all the project prioritization and also uh, communication uh, using of online resources, everything that is needed for rollout. And uh, it it's a little bit again, we, we're preparing for this rollout and it's and not just initial rollout, it could be rollout of some uh, some things after the time. Uh, there's a question from in chat from AG, if there are 10 to 15 keen users who are developing report dashboards up to, uh, up to 100 users viewers. So I assume it's a premium, which license policy preferred pro or premium for 10 plus 100 users. I would say that uh, um, I would say that it's still pro. Uh, pro 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 will be more efficient. Uh, you could make a simple calculation. So premium premium uh, license costs five thousand. Starting uh, first plan is five thousand dollars per month. So it, if you it means that you need at least five hundred pro users that match the license fee. So if you have 100 users, pro, uh, 100 viewers, uh, they still, the viewers still need a pro license. Uh, they don't need a pro license, a premium capacity, but then you need a buy a full capacity. So it means my recommendation for 100, up to, up to 500 uh, or 400 users still use pro license. Yeah, and that is what you need to decide for, for this um, uh, rollout. And here you can see that, and again, this rollout, it doesn't mean that you are rolling out something the very for very first time. After 
couple of years, you again need to roll out probably some things or re, uh, refine them. Yeah, and there are some Microsoft also providing some more detailed steps for for rollout. And uh, when when it's done, so uh, rollout actually um, breaks this deployment obstacles, and we could uh, go directly to say sustainability. It means that we over time we improving. What we are doing, and of course, it's uh, uh, very related to uh, knowledge that we accumulate and we use. And uh, there, you could see that it's imp very important what kind of what, uh, what kind of knowledge and best practices we are collecting and exchanging. So, I advise uh, you to build your internal meetup meetup. Uh, culture so that you are uh, meeting maybe once in a quarter or once a month and doing short exchange meetups where we are you are uh, just talking about what you are doing and what you're doing with analytics uh, with power bi and it will, will will give a lot of uh, new information in science and because nowadays we are learning very differently so if you have five, ten analysts uh, who are building uh, uh, building that uh, reports and dashboards in your organization, they they usually have very different set of knowledge and set of understanding because they are going to different meetups, they are looking at different information, reading different blogs, looking uh, watching different videos. So they they have different knowledge and put putting all this together, it's very important. In this case, this this step of uh, or this pillar of Power BI uh, adoption framework means that you are revising and and, and this is something that you could uh, do really regularly. You could refine it every year. I would suggest you to do it every year by doing inventory of the knowledge you have in your organization and also uh, thinking how to uh, add this new knowledge to, to this. And again, with a support pillar, we are becoming more sustainable and uh, Joe could help and drive this business culture better. So yeah, we could see again, this um, all these um, uh, frameworks, uh, all these pillars. And this engagement model, and this is way, this approach is actually how we, how we really drive the self-service organization or self-service BI. Because self-service BI means that business could help business. Yeah, that business is driving this analytics themselves, so they don't need to ask to IT for everything. Like, uh, if you want a uh, if you want a report or you need uh, some additional thing, you ask you ask IT. Then wait, they are building. Maybe it's not always the most valuable activity, so it's uh, IT even not happy to do that. Uh, and this framework and this approach is really driving self-service BI, which means that business business could help and teach business. IT could do the more IT-related stuff, and, and uh, it bring overall it brings more and more value. And uh, funding approach, there are two ways how to fund this. One is a centralized approach that uh, everything is uh, overlooked and, and uh, finance cert centralized and there is a business funded approach that actually each business unit a business department could could uh, um, drive it uh, from the financial perspective themselves and uh, yeah as with what we started the opportunity is to really create really create this data driven uh, self service culture and uh, main obstacle is how to implement this self-service that business helps business and teaches business and the way how to it, do it is actually implement the proper data-driven culture uh, using all the related uh, things around like uh, in these pillars yeah thank you that's all from my side uh, happy to answer questions or hear comments. And I will put on screen this um, 
uh, pillars with detailed information here to remember. Or maybe you, if you want, if you can, or uh, can, can you share uh, what is the situation with the data culture, data culture in your organization? So how you see it, how you explain how much in your organization you think and talk about data culture. How you, is it a driver of your organization, uh, self-service BI? Okay. Yeah, Bibo is writing that we are at the very beginning. That is good. Then I I think that uh, yeah, if you are very beginning, read uh, read uh, this uh, this materials that sharing re re link yeah, and uh, especially data culture. Uh, it's not very long, so it's quite short, but where quite insightful so it's um, it uh, it will help you a lot so this is very interesting reading I, I read it even a couple of times and you start to thinking it because uh, yeah it data culture is not about understanding data so much data culture is more thinking about how to build this data flywheel and get the value of the out of data and um, this Business getting business value out of analytics is a million dollar question or billion dollar question it depends on the company you are working with and um, at uh, and um, if you answer these questions you are really the data champion. Oh, well, this the other Bible here. I just yeah, wanted yeah. to add Bible. comment that uh, for me personally the biggest struggle has been actually to get the attention from the business. Uh, to show the value because yeah you can actually build a report and show the value but uh, people are so uh, let's say drowned in daily operations that it's very very challenging to get their attention and uh, focus on these topics but that's just a comment not to say that uh, this doesn't yeah. work yeah this is a very good comment and uh, I, I also read about it uh, um, in different materials so this is a quite common situation it's it sounds strange yeah because you're saying i will show you how. it 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 looks like you know this there's a cartoon when the guy is uh, going uh, going with a square uh, like uh, and and the other guy is saying there's a wheel possible and he's saying i don't have time for change, for innovation uh, and it sounds a little bit like this, and it sounds very contrary to intuitive and, and strange that you are showing how to get value and the business saying, no, we don't need it. We don't need more money, uh, stay, uh, stay away. But uh, the solution is to really find someone in the organization whom you could uh, use as example. Because when you have this example, this win, uh, this champions, then you need to show it uh, on the top organization. And then everyone will will want to to be there. So that is. I agree. Think that about this really flywheel. <laughs> yeah, think about this flywheel because when you say that business don't want, it means that you skip at this second stage and you're actually uh, trying to 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 go over here somewhere. The second stage is uh, not only that you know about this value. This is show. It, it must be show. It, it must be that uh, there is a like yearly organizational company meetup the, when the, all the employees are uh, meeting together and you are here with your topic, with your uh, analytical topic and you are on the stage and showing that here is a value. We, we increase this, we decrease this, we we got this, and for that you need senior leadership, uh, senior uh, leadership sponsor, sponsorship to achieve that. To be there, to be able to show. Okay, yeah. Thanks then, everyone, for participation. 
I hope you enjoyed this uh, session and see you on the next meetups. Follow us on, on meetup.com. Have a nice evening. And uh, for those who, uh, who lives in Latvia or related to Latvia, happy Independence Day. Bye.